Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's talk about whether the government can ever take away your free speech. Do me a favor and use your freedom of speech to smash that like button. So can the government take away a person's free speech? This seems like a question with an obvious answer, right? I have this weird memory of a little thing called the First Amendment, which specifically says, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. Maybe it's just me, but I don't see any exceptions there. But let's get into the facts of this case to see what it's all about. Charles Schenck was the general secretary of the Socialist Party and oversaw the distribution of about 15,000 leaflets urging men to not participate in the military draft during World War I. Among other things, the leaflets claimed that the military draft was a violation of the 13th Amendment's prohibition against involuntary servitude. Schenck was arrested and convicted for violating the Espionage Act of 1917, which made it a crime to cause insubordination in the military or obstruct recruitment. The issue before the court was a seemingly simple question. Did Schenck's conviction under the Espionage Act violate his constitutional rights? Considering that he was arrested for words on a sheet of paper, this might seem like something that was obviously unconstitutional. So it may surprise you to find out that the court ruled unanimously 9-0 upholding his conviction, holding that the Espionage Act was in fact an appropriate exercise of Congress's wartime authority. Again, I'm gonna be annoying and point out that there's nothing in the Constitution that says or implies that Congress and the President have more power during wartime, but that's what the court said here not for the first or last time. And this is one of the important parts because Congress is definitely abridging people's free speech, which the First Amendment clearly says it cannot do. Well, the majority opinion essentially acknowledged this, saying that what was written in the pamphlet would normally have been protected speech. But they say that speech being protected depends on the circumstances. They further declare that speech that would normally be protected during peacetime could hinder the war effort to such a degree that this speech isn't protected while the nation is at war. So basically the court is making an exception because of the war. It's allowing Congress to restrict speech that it normally would not be allowed to restrict. This leads us to the lasting impact of the case, which is that there may be time, place, and manner restrictions to speech, as the First Amendment does not protect urging unlawful conduct. The AP exam loves that phrase, time, place, and manner restrictions. It's on the test pretty much every year. It basically provides governments with a loophole to restrict, though not usually outright ban, speech based on where and how that speech is being conveyed. This includes restrictions like when and where an event can be held. The court reasoned that speech creating a clear and present danger was not protected by the First Amendment's protection of free speech, and therefore could be restricted. In one of the most famous quotes from any Supreme Court opinion, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes said, the most stringent protection of free speech would not protect a man falsely shouting fire in a theater and creating a panic. The question in every case is whether the words used are used in such circumstances and are of such a nature as to create a clear and present danger that they will bring about the substantive evils that Congress has a right to prevent. And here I feel obligated to point out that Holmes specifically says falsely shouting fire in a theater. I have to imagine that Schenck and the other anti-war protesters would argue that there really was a fire they were trying to warn people of. It actually didn't take very long for the court to abandon this standard of speech being unprotected if it presents a clear and present danger. So the court's reasoning in Schenck is not current case law. The court most recently altered it in Brandenburg versus Ohio to speech promoting imminent lawless action. But Schenck still matters today, over 100 years later. This case established the precedent, which is still used today, that allow for time, place, and manner restrictions on speech. This case is in sharp contrast to Tinker, which 50 years later, protected and expanded speech rights. All right, that's it for this one. Until next time, this has been a Lamoney production. Thanks again for watching. If this video helped you out, then help me out by hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. Check out the Ultimate Review Packet. I made it so you know it's awesome. It'll make your life so much easier as you take AP Gov and prepare for that AP exam. And I will see you in the next video.